Holy fee meat, folks. Is it merely today's specialty, or is it a food type worthy of covering every meal of the day? Well, if you've been following along, I imagine most of you already know the answer to that question. However, note it's been years since our last leafy meal, and things have changed. We've got brand new sources of the stuff, refined farms centered on the would-be protein, and plenty more to discuss on this revisit here. So best grab your oars, as there's some gators to wrangle. Grass gators, that is. Located in any of our three waterlogged biomes, these skittish beasts were not a thing back when leafy meat first got good, but oh boy have they made it oh so much better than it's ever been. For you see, grass gators here drop a total of seven, count it seven leafy meat per when murdered, which instantly renders them the best sources of stuff in the entire game, and it's not even close. Be mindful though, they are horde-like creatures, so hurting one is going to aggro the others, and kind Fighting these beefalo of the seas on a boat is not all that easy. Still, killing them will be more than worth it, as believe it or not, the game also respawns additional grass gators every two minutes. No, not kidding. That means we can farm three gators per biome every few minutes for absolute boatloads of leafy meat, which is exactly why I just had to start the day with a splash. But old uh, beard, is any of that even worth it? Yes, yes it is. As while leafy meat by its lonesome is going to leave a lot to be desired, its crockpot dishes are arguably some of the absolute best in this game. Cheap too. Just take beefy greens here for example, and its 75 hunger and 40 health at the cost of just one slice of the green stuff and a few vegetables. However, it doesn't end there. If we sweeten things up, we might have the pleasure of a side salad for our main salad that also restores a good chunk of hunger per bite, but boasts a respectably high sanity restoration to boots. To continue though, if you want to turn both those meals into one in order to cover all of your bases at once, then be sure to toss an onion into the mix for a lovely veggie burger today. And lastly, there's leafy meatloaf. And yes, that's all I'm going to say about that. But trust me folks, leafy meat and its expandable topics are not yet done. Not when we've got a ton more sources of the stuff, like the lure plants of spring. There will come a day that we dive deeper on these bulbs, but for now, note how they spawn every few days in spring all around all players and can drop leafy meat in two different ways through straight up quote unquote murder or through basic harvesting. Now the latter is likely the second best leafy meat farm in the entire game as it's safe and repeatable every two days. However, amassing enough balls to even get half of this is gonna take multiple springs, so be aware of that. But here's something we weren't aware of two years ago in relation to these things. Pearl's Island will have one guaranteed. Well, come around day 36 that is, but still, never say no to a free alert plan everybody take advantage but while we're out here we might as well visit a couple critters on the lunar island itself as they too deserve a mention here today and we'll start with care rats although do remember to bring a shovel otherwise your food is going to be running away from you it doesn't matter when or how you kill them as they will always drop a leafy meat for us and while they are not the most renewable creatures in the world we do have a couple options here the lunar experiment combined with plain old carrots as you can see, and perhaps surprisingly, the lunar grotto itself. Now allow me to explain. Down here among the fungus, plenty of earthquakes can still occur, and these earthquakes have a solid chance of dropping a care rat or two every few seconds. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Sort of like salamanders here. In fact, apart from salamanders themselves fighting back, they're essentially the exact same as care rats in today's context. They all drop a single piece of leafy meat when unripe and can be renewed through mad science and time. Time spent on waiting for them to unripen, that is. And Folks, that's sort of how it goes for leafy meat nowadays. While it was cool to see all these varied sources now have a legitimate reason for existing back in the day, the introduction of grass gators last year have made them all obsolete. Even the ocean fishies. Both fall lounder and bloomfin tuna drop leafy meat when caught and killed, which is nice for those in the fishing, I suppose, but it's only one per fish, and you have to rely on the game actually spawning the actual schools that you want if you know what I mean. 
Again, not bad, just not great. All that said, I don't think anything beats grass geckos when it comes to being the absolute worst source of the stuff found primarily near the rock den, if a world has even generated them at all, mind. We might also find a herd in the dragonfly desert or our rocky lands, so make notes. Now, killing these things is an absolute pain, as I don't know what it is about leafy meat mobs, but I have discovered here today that they're all flippin' skittish for Pete's sake. Now, is it possible? For sure. All you need is time or a ranged weapon, of course. Is it viable and farmable? No. Not for leafy meat, that is. Grass gecko grass farms are totally fine if you want to wait out the 25-day morphing period of transplanted grass. But to go through all of this for one leafy meat per kill is atrocious. Don't even think about it, honestly. But lastly, the dreaded Lord of the Flute Flies was also not around all them years ago. However, they will still get the last mention here today. Not because they're any good for us, mind, as we only get one leafy meat per kill, but really because we have to talk about everything, am I right? Plus, I might have forgotten them until the very end of editing this video. That reminds me, however, if we do gotta talk everything, we need one last segment here. The little things. Leafy meat is still meat, so the Pig King will trade us gold for it, as you can see. Pigmen themselves will become loyal to us if we happen to trade them some. Bunnymen, on the other hand, will not have the same reaction, unfortunately. Wigford players can indeed eat this questionable food. However, work players cannot. Make your notes. And there you have it, everyone. A lovely and healthy revisit to leafy meat within Don't Starve Together. We had ourselves some new sources, refined farms, and of course expanded upon information that Passbeard was too lazy to get to you for whatever reason. But I hope today you can use it all well. Leafy meat needs to be a part of your diet plans, folks. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all. Let me know what else needs a revisit soon, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.